So sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge trying to find the right API for your next project. You can spend hours searching through Google looking for the API that's got the exact type of data that you're after, doesn't require a credit card, and doesn't require you to create an account or has got some kind of irritating configuration. And if you have been searching for ages, you might be tempted to create your own local API, but that's not without effort because you need to create a database, install any packages like Express and your ORM, and that's before you've even created any test data. But there is an easy way to get data into your project that will save you all of this time and effort. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily get an API set up and connect it to any projects that you're working on with the exact type of data that you need pretty much instantly. So essentially what we're going to be doing in this project is installing and running an NPM package. So you're going to need to make sure that you've got Node and NPM installed on your machine. And if you don't have, for whatever reason, I'll put some links in the description below so you can go ahead and get set up with that. And the other thing that you're going to need is an actual project to connect the data to. So for example, let's say I was creating some kind of blog page or application, and I want to get the blog posts from the API and then display them on the page. So we're going to be using this simple bit of front end code to actually display those posts. And I'll flesh this out as we move through the various steps of getting this set up. So the package we're going to be using is called JSON server. And essentially what it does is takes a JSON file and treats that as the data that would be normally stored in your database as the API data. So that enables us to create just a simple file and serve that up as an API. And you'll see later on that it's actually really flexible in what we can do with it. But to get it installed, we say npm install and I'm going to pass dash G to install it globally. And then we're going to install JSON server. So we let that run through. And once it's installed, you can simply run it by using the JSON server command. And it expects a file name to actually serve the data from. So for example, if we had something called posts.json, that would be the file where all of the JSON data was stored. So let's create that now in our directory for our project. And then when we run the command now down in the terminal, we should find that we don't get any errors. And we can see the API is actually being served on this URL here. So if we open that up here in Chrome, just see what that looks like. You can see we're greeted with a homepage for JSON server and there's some details appearing in the terminal for the requests that we're making. So obviously this file is empty at the moment, so there are no endpoints or data to be served to the front end app. So how do we go about putting data into this file? Well, of course, you could actually create this all yourself manually if you wanted to create some objects and things in here and arrays of comments and posts for our blog, but that's a bit like hard work. So let's head on over to ChatGPT uh, to actually create that for us. And if we ask the right questions here in ChatGPT, we can get some pretty good data to put into our posts.json file. So let's ask it, please can you create some JSON for a blog style website with posts and comments that can be used in JSON server? And it should understand what that package uh, is referring to as well from the NPM package. So it's going to go ahead and generate some uh, posts and also some comments. And it's generated a couple of posts there and uh, they've obviously got some comments embedded in them. So we've got some data now that we can put into our file, but it'd be nice to have some images as well. So let's ask it to repeat that, but with some images from Unsplash. So we'll say, please repeat, uh, but including some th thumbnail images from Unsplash. And hopefully that should go ahead and get some uh, URLs that we can then use to put some images in our blog posts. Okay, and you can see it's got some URLs now in the image property as well. So that's all good. We can use those to actually uh, put some images on our page. So I'm going to copy that code, uh, that JSON file that it's created and just pop it into posts and then hit save. And now if we go over to the URL where our JSON server is running, in fact, we might just need to reload the JSON server. Uh, you can actually supply a watch parameter as well to it. So it kind of watches for any changes to that file. Uh, but if we just go over now here to forward slash posts, you should be able to see uh, that we've got some JSON data being returned. And it's exactly the same data that we've just pasted from ChatGPT. So we've only got two blog posts in there at the moment. So let's let's see if we can get it to generate a few more. So we'll say thank you. Uh, 
please repeat with five more posts. Okay, and hopefully that should give us some more data in there. Just let it do its thing. So now we've got two, yeah, there's three. So it's gonna create a few more posts for us now. Uh, so once that's done, we'll copy and paste that into the posts file. Okay, so it's done that now. Uh, we have all of the extra posts that we've asked for. So let's just get rid of what's in the post file at the moment and paste in the new data from ChatGPT. And we should find, now we've got a lot more data in there. So you can generate as much data as you like with this, but that's probably a good amount of sample data for us to get going. So that's our API setup. Let's go ahead and actually create the code that will fetch this data from the API and actually populate our page. So just to let you know on the index page, we've got a form existing already for adding new posts. And there's a placeholder here for adding uh, the posts that we're about to retrieve from the API. So we're gonna go ahead over to the script file here so I'm going to create a function here called get posts, and that's essentially just going to be a call to fetch. And what are we going to be fetching data from? Well, it's just this API endpoint for forward slash posts that we've created just now. And once we've done that, we just want to convert it to JSON data. So standard thing with fetch is to call the response.json JSON function on the response object. And then when we've done that, we should have the results, which will essentially be this list of posts here. So let's rename that posts. And I'm not going to do anything super fancy for this example. I'm literally just going to do a bit of hacking into the DOM to actually uh, put this information in. So let's grab the placeholder in the uh, HTML, which we said a moment ago was posts. And I'm just going to set the inner HTML of that equal to a string. And the string I'm going to generate is basically taking each of the posts in turn and reducing it down into uh, one blob of HTML. So we're just going to use the reduce function here. So initialize the HTML accumulator variable up here as an empty string, so don't get any errors. And essentially what I'm going to do for each item that we've got in the post, for each post that we've got, I'm going to return the HTML. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to generate some extra HTML into that string. So we'll use a template literal here. Like I say, very messy, but it should hopefully demonstrate the point of what we need to do here. So we're going to have a div class of post. Should we close that up? And then the other thing that we want inside the post is the image. So I'm going to create a div with a class of image. Actually, let's uh, use some BEM notation, say post image. Uh, that image is just going to be an image tag where the source is set to the post. And don't forget the post object here inside of this reduce function is going to be each one of these posts in the array. So post.image is going to be the property that we want to access. Make sure we close up that image and close that div there. And then once we've got the image, we'll just put a h2 with a class of post uh, underscore title. And then that will just be the result of the post.title, which again, you can see up here in the data that's returned from the array. And then the next thing after that, uh, well, actually we'll put a link inside there as well, because you would normally click it to go to that, to actually read the post uh, itself. We'll just put it as an empty uh, href there. Okay, so that's our h2 for our heading, for our title. And then the next thing we want in there is actually the content itself. So there's not masses of content inside of that property. Chat GPT didn't write a whole blog post for each one, but it's enough for us to use as placeholder uh, text. So we'll say the post.content and just grab that from the object. Close that p tag. And then the other thing that we've got as information is the author. So we'll just say class of post underscore author and then the post.author. And I'll leave the comments because I think we've got enough information to display something on the page. Uh, so if we save that now, uh, obviously nothing's gonna happen because we're not calling that get posts function uh, when the uh, script loads, but we can do that at the bottom here. And now when the page loads, uh, we're getting all of the data from the API. In fact, let's just do that again and check in the network uh, tab here in Chrome, just to prove that that's going through. Uh, so it should open that up a little bit. 
You can see there we're getting a request to the posts uh, data and obviously we're getting some information coming out and I've put way too many closing tags there. Uh, so now we've got uh, all of the markup being displayed and uh, the images being grabbed as well from Unsplash. I think these kind of change every time because it's just uh, a placeholder from Unsplash. Maybe I'm wrong. So let's just paste in some CSS to make this look a little bit better. Uh, now each blog post is appearing in a card and the author name is at the bottom. So I think that's looking a lot better than it was. So what we've done so far really isn't that different from just calling a local JSON file from the project directory that you're working from. For example, in our script, we could come in here and just replace this URL with a path to one of the files in our directory, such as the post.json file. And although the JSON server package is really convenient for setting this up, it also offers us all of the other functionalities that an API might offer, such as adding new posts into the database, which is essentially our posts.json file. So normally with a fetch request, you wouldn't just be able to uh, post data back into the posts.json file, but the JSON web server provides us with a post endpoint to actually create new data in there. And that's why we've got this form at the bottom of the page to allow us to add new posts. So let's have a look at an example of how you might use a post request to actually add data into the file. So let's go down here. Uh, just before we call get posts, I'm going to create an event listener for the form. So we'll say document.get element by ID. And the ID of the form, if we just check, is add post form. And I'm going to add an event listener here for uh, submit events. And I want to grab the event object that comes through from that. And what I'm going to do first of all is just say event dot prevent default, but which will stop the form from submitting and the page reloading. What I then want to do is get all of the data from the form, the title, content, author, and thumbnail URL. So to do that, I'm going to create a new variable called form data, and I'm going to spread in the result of a call to a new form data object and pass in event.target. And if we log that to the console, essentially what that will do is just get us all of the form fields uh, in an array uh, ready for us to have a look at uh, using that data. So let's just put some random data in here. Let's, let's click add post. And now you can see we've got this array. We've got four items from the actual form field, and we've got key value pairs in an array, uh, which we can now map into an object. So one way to create this object is to create a new variable here, and then you to use object.values for the form data. And we're going to reduce this down into a object, and we'll just call the object accumulator. And we're going to have each of the entries from there, uh, from the array that we can see in the console there at the moment. And we're going to initialize this payload variable as an empty object. And just to be explicit to what we're doing here, we're going to get the key, uh, which is going to basically be the first item in that entry array. So that's what we're looking at over here in the console. And then the second one is the value. So we'll just say entry uh, one. And then after that, we're just going to return whatever we've got in the accumulator for the moment, and then a new key uh, value property in that object, uh, which would, should map all of these uh, values and these arrays into an object. So let's just log out the, con uh, the payload there so you can see what that looks like. And that should be ready for us to send to the API. Okay, and you can see that's the arrays there. And now we've got this uh, object nicely formatted with all of this different information. And um, one thing I've just noticed as well is the uh, data here uh, that ChatGPT gave us has used the name image for the uh, thumbnail uh, URL. So uh, let's just change that in our form uh, because that is currently set in the markup to uh, thumbnail. So we'll say uh, image for the name of the input. And if we just run that one more time over here, we should find that this is now called image which is good because it matches the schema that's already set up uh, in the data. And this is good because when we pull the data back out, it will be in the same format, so we're not going to get any missing images. So back over in the script, uh, we've got the payload ready for us to send. The only thing we really want to do now is make another fetch request to actually send it to the API. So the API URL is exactly the same, which is going to post 
to the posts endpoint. Uh, but this time we're just going to provide some options because we don't want to do a get request. We want to set the method to be post. Uh, we want to also set the headers to be uh, set the content type to be application JSON, because otherwise it won't understand. It will be sent as text. And then finally, we need to send the body, and that's that payload uh, object that we've just created. But we need to stringify it. So we'll say JSON stringify payload. And then once we've done that, we'll get the uh, response that we get. Just log it out to the console. It should give us uh, some information about what's happened. And also what we want to do is actually rebuild all of the uh, cards, all of the blog posts on the page. So we'll just return uh, the get posts function again, and that should uh, rebuild everything on the page for us. So uh, let's uh, just create a new post. So we'll say uh, my new post. Um, just put some random content in here. Uh, the author is me. Um, for the thumbnail URL, let's go over to Unsplash and grab something. So Unsplash coding. And let's just have something like this. So I'm just going to be a bit cheeky and just grab the uh, image URL. And then go over to our little blog post app and just paste that in. You can see here we've got uh, the response object coming in uh, from the post request. And then that looks 201 means that it was successful but queued. So if we have a look in here, you can see now at the bottom of the list of posts is my new post that I just created a moment ago. And that should have been added into the posts.json uh, array as well into this file here. So looking down to the bottom here, you can see uh, that is the data that I've just created from the form that's just been sent to the API via the JSON server package. So data has now been added into the posts.json file, but that form is quite insecure. We can pretty much type anything that we want into there and it'll be saved into the file. So probably the next step in our app would be to add some validation to that form. And if you're looking for some tips on how to do that, then you should check out this next video where we go through the best way to do client-side validation with JavaScript.